Good morning, my dear students. Welcome back to the YouTube video lesson on Spectrum, Literature and Contemporary Issues. Today we are going to have a discussion on the poem Death's Fugue written by Paul Celan. Before entering into the text, let's have a brief introduction of the poet Paul Celan. Paul Celan was a German language poet whose original name was Paul Anschel. He was born in Romania on 23rd November 1920. His parents were German-speaking Jews who died in Nazi labor camp. Paul Celan was also under Nazi imprisonment for 18 months. His parents' death in the Nazi camps and the experience of Holocaust have inspired most of Celan's poetry. While he knew six languages and translated many works, he wrote his poems only in German. His first collection of poems, Sand from the Urns, was published in 1948. His second collection of poems, Poppy and Memory, brought him much critical attention. The sense of estrangement he felt towards German, which was his mother tongue, as well as the language of his mother's murderers enabled him to experiment with the language. Now about the background of the poem. The poem Death's Fugue was written in 1948 after Paul Celan escaped from the Nazi labor camp. Death's Fugue is Celan's one of the most famous poems. It is written in the fugue form. A fugue is a musical piece which begins with a principal or major theme and then repeats it several times. So in a fugue poem you can have lots of repetition. And uh, you have to remember that this poem is not written in the poetic or verse form but it is composed in a song or musical form. The title of the poem refers to the music played by the Jew inmates in a Nazi labor camp. While they carried out their tasks in the camp, they used to sing this song. The poem is partly inspired by Paul Celan's experience and deals with his life in Nazi concentration camps. Now into the text of the poem. Black milk of daybreak, we drink it at nightfall. We drink it at noon, in the morning we drink it, at night we drink it and drink it. We are digging a grave in the sky, it is ample to lie there. A man in the house, he plays with the serpents, he writes, he writes when the night falls to Germany, your golden hair Margaret, he writes it and walks from the house. The stars glitter, he whistles his dogs up, he whistles his Jews out and orders a grave to be dug in the earth, he commands us, strike up for the dance. The speakers of the poem are a group of Jewish prisoners in a Nazi labor camp. They talk about drinking black milk throughout the day, which is a symbol of the terrible life in Nazi camps. It refers to the starvation suffered by Jewish prisoners in the camp. The speakers are made to do forced labor in the camp. They are forced to dig graves for the Jews who died of extreme hard labor and undernourishment in the camp. They talk about a man who is actually the camp guard. Unlike the prisoners, he lives in a comfortable house and thinks of himself as a writer. He writes about the golden hair of Margaret. Margaret is the heroine of Gade's Forced. Here, the golden hair is a reference to the German identity. He seems like a lover of nature and a romantic, but he is very cruel to the inmates. When he is not writing, he abuses the Jews and scares them by calling the dog to his side. He orders them to dig up graves and also orders them to play music. Black milk of daybreak, we drink you at night. We drink you in the morning. At noon, we drink you at nightfall, drink you and drink you. A man in the house, he plays with the serpents, he writes, he writes when the night falls to Germany, your golden hair Margaret, your ashen hair Shilamit, we are digging up a grave in the sky, it is ample to lie there. 
He shouts, stab deeper in earth. You there and you others, you sing and you play. He grabs at the iron in his belt and swings it and blue are his eyes. Stab deeper your spades, you there and you others play on for the dancing. Black milk of daybreak, we drink you at nightfall, we drink you at noon, in the morning we drink you at nightfall, drink you and drink you. A man in the house, your golden hair Margaret, your ashen hair Shilamit, he plays with the serpents. The second stanza of the poem starts with the same lines as in the first stanza. This is a characteristic of the fugue form. Shilamit is the female version of the Hebrew name Solomon. Her ashen hair is an indicative of her Hebrew identity. The iron in his belt refers to the gun of the prison guard and the blue eyes are again a reference to the German Aryan identity. He shouts, play sweeter Dutch music that comes as a master from Germany. He shouts, stroke harder the strings and as smoke you shall climb to the sky. Then you will have a grave in the clouds, it is amble to lie there. Black milk of daybreak, we drink you at night, we drink you at noon. Death comes as a master from Germany, we drink you at nightfall and morning, we drink you and drink you. A master from Germany, death comes with eyes that are blue. With a bullet of lead, he will hit in the mark, he will hit you. A man in the house, your golden hair, Margaret. He hunts us down with his dogs. In the sky, he gives us a grave. He plays with the serpents and dreams. Death comes as a master from Germany. Your golden hair, Margaret. Your ashen hair, Shilamit. As in the last stanza, the god continues to threaten the Jews. He beats the prisoners with a rod and makes them work beyond their capacity. In the third stanza as well, we see the repetition of the initial lines. There is also a mentioning of the coming of death as a master from Germany, which indirectly points an accusing finger at Hitler, the master brain of Jewish genocide. The guard now warns the inmates to play the song of death more sweetly. It is ironic that when so many people are killed violently, the guard asks the inmates to play the song sweetly. The guard tells them that once they are done with the music, they will also be killed. In the fourth stanza, we see how the guard is compared to death. He starts shooting them with his bullets. The guard has also let loose the dogs on them. While concluding the poem, there is nothing coherent in the poem. Each thought comes and goes, mixed with different kinds of emotions. The dominating emotions in the poem are fear, pain and desperation or disappointment. There was not a day in their lives, all days were the same. They had nothing to rely upon and no hopes of escape from the prison. The poem is not simply a musical composition but a death song that arises from the heart of the sufferer because he longs for death. He earnestly longs or desires for death. Only death can save him from all his sufferings. That's the end of the session. Thank you.